Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be providing some background information on power transmission. So let's go ahead and get started. Shafts supporting torques are often used to transmit power in machines. Now this is a classic application in mechanical engineering, okay? So uh, mechanical engineers deal with this quite frequently, especially mechanical engineers who work in the machine design side of that profession. So how do we dig into this a little bit deeper? Well, first let's talk about the definition of power. What is power? Well, power is work performed per unit time. So power is work over time, okay? Now what is work? Well, you might remember from physics, work in general is given as a force times a displacement. That's what you learn in physics. In this application, we're thinking about work done by a rotating shaft. So that's gonna be equal to torque times an angle of rotation. Now, does that make sense? Well, yeah, when we talk about work performed by a force, again, we look at force times a displacement. Here, this is work performed by a torque moment. So instead of force, we have torque moment, and instead of multiplied by a displacement, you multiply by an angle of rotation, okay? So let's go a little bit further. P is gonna be power, and that's gonna be equal to, again, it's work performed per unit time. So we can write this as T D theta DT, okay? Now, how does this translate to work performed per unit time? Well, the T D theta is work. Notice that's torque times a differential angle of rotation. And then the dt in this de denominator is the per unit time, okay? And so we can say d theta is a differential rotation angle, okay? Now, let's go a little bit more with this. Let's define angular velocity, okay? What is angular velocity? Well, angular velocity, angular velocity is the rate of change of an angle with time, okay? And so we typically call this omega. Omega is angular velocity. And if it's a rate of change of an angle with time, how can we write this in a differential form? Well, we can write this as d theta dt. And so sure enough, where where is this d theta dt? Well, it's found right here in the definition of power. So what I can say is so power can also be described as torque moment times omega, okay? Now let's, again, let's keep going a little further and define a few more things. So we can relate angular velocity to something that we call frequency or sometimes called angular frequency, okay? And so how do we do that? Well, we can, we can relate it as this. We can say omega equals 2 pi f, okay? So we have this angular velocity related to frequency f by 2 pi, okay? And so now what can we write? So we can say so power also equals torque times 2 pi f. So now we've got different forms, different versions of how we can express power based on potential given information in a, in a design scenario or a problem, okay? So let's talk about the units now, all right? Let's talk about units of all of these important items, okay? So power, P, has units of watts, okay? 
watts, and we can abbreviate that with a capital W. And remember, this triple equal sign is the symbol that means has units of. So what is a watt? Well, one watt is the same thing as one newton times meter per second. Okay, one newton meter per second. This is for SI units, okay, or, or essentially metric units, all right? What about in English units? Well, in English units, power is going to have units of horsepower, okay? And we abbreviate that HP, and it turns out that 1 HP is the same thing as 550 pound feet per second, okay? And this is going to be the value in English units. Okay, now let's talk some more about units, make sure we have a good understanding. Some of this might be your review from, from Physics 1, okay? Frequency F has units of revolutions per time, okay? And so we typically say, uh, I'm going to write typically... This is expressed as revolutions per second or revolutions per minute or cycles per second, etc. Okay, now if we are using revolutions per second or cycles per second, that specifically has a special name and that special name is called a hertz. So we can say one revolution per second, it's specifically per second, is equal to one hertz, okay? Uh, additionally, one cycle, if we think of this as a, as a circular movement, one cycle is how many radians? Well, if you wanna try to answer, do it now. Pause the video, because I'm about to tell you. One cycle is two pi radians, okay? And finally, what are the units of omega, angular velocity? Well, that's radians over time, okay? And so typically, that's going to be radians per second, all right? Now, some or possibly all of this information you may have seen before in a physics course, okay? So hopefully some or possibly all of this is a review for you, but if not, that's okay. That's why we're going over it now, all right? So how do we use all this or why would we want to use all of this? Well, we can size or design a rotating shaft by relating these uh, equations together strategically. So let's write that down. We can size or design a rotating shaft by relating these equations together with tau allow and a factor of safety, okay? So we're kind of rewinding back to some knowledge we've seen before with an allowable shear stress and a factor of safety, okay? So recall that tau allow is equal to TR over J. We studied that before, right? We have other videos on this. Torque times a radius of a shaft divided by polar moment of inertia, inertia. Okay, so we can call this equation one, all right? We also know that from earlier in this video, power is two pi times the frequency times the torque. So we can rearrange that and say torque is power over 2 pi times the frequency, and that's equation 2. Okay, and again, this equation here is from earlier in this video, right? It's, it's up here. There we go, right there. Okay? And so what we can do is 
we can use these two equations, equation one and equation two, together to design a rotating shaft with frequency F supporting power P, okay? So that's gonna conclude this information, this background information on power transmission. We're gonna see uh, another video where we do a numerical example exercising and using um, these relationships to design or size a shaft. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe.